So we got some huge, huge news today. There's been rumors going on for weeks, for months. There was even talks last season about something like this happening. And it's official. Stuart Haas Racing will be seizing operations at the end of 2024. Let's talk about it. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Also, give me your thoughts on this video. What do you think about Stuart Haas Racing seizing operations? Where do you think the charters go? Where do you think the drivers go? Let me know. Plus, give me any improvements I can make on the channel. Just to start off this, I am working with a pretty messed up throat. I got some ginger soda right here so it can help me talk a little bit. So if you hear some raspiness or maybe even a voice crack, please just leave me alone. If you noticed, I'm rocking the Danica Patrick shirt today with today's news. This is just really, really disappointing. But with the way the rumors have gone in the last month especially, all signs were kind of pointing to this happening. So I guess it isn't a huge surprise. I think the biggest shock will be when they're in Daytona next year and there's no Stuart Haas 14, Stuart Haas 41. None of the cars are on the grid. Oh my God. Oh my God. But I'm going to put this statement up so you could read it. I'm going to leave it up for a little bit while I'm talking here. But a joint statement from both Tony Stewart and Gene Haas, the owners of Stuart Haas Racing, just going through a little bit of the decision process and how they're feeling about the situation and how they feel about the sport of NASCAR and Stuart Haas Racing's history in the sport. Like I mentioned, this wasn't the biggest surprise with all the rumors we have been getting about something like this happening. I don't think there's a team I've talked about more on this channel than Stuart Haas Racing because of all the rumors. And they've improved a lot this season as well, which has also given me some more conversation points, but I will not be talking about them anymore in 2025 because they will be shut down. And it also sounds like the Xfinity program will be shut down as well. So there's technically six drivers that are looking for a home next year. You have two Xfinity drivers and Cole Custer and Riley Herbst. And then you have the four cup drivers of Ryan Priest, Chase Briscoe, Josh Berry, and Noah Gregson. Before we get into that stuff, into the silly season stuff too much, I kind of wanted to say a couple of words about Stuart Haas Racing. I remember when Tony Stewart purchased a part of the original Haas team. I think at the time they might have had Mike Bliss in the car. I can't really remember. And they were just a struggling organization. They had the Zero car and they had the 60 car. And they were struggling pretty much every race, every year. No matter if it was Johnny Sauter or Mike Bliss or Jack Sprague. And these are pretty pretty good drivers. And they all really struggled for Haas in the Cup Series. And then you had Tony Stewart come in and purchase the team and immediately start winning races and looking really competitive. It was really impressive what him and Ryan Newman were able to do in those early years. Along the way, Tony Stewart became the first owner driver since the legendary Alan Kowicki to win a cup series championship which was amazing it was very impressive especially with a team with the team just starting up just getting going and he's already getting a championship we thought there was many more on the way for Stuart Haas Racing unfortunately they were only able to get one more but luckily that was Kevin Harvick's lone championship just a few years later in the number four car a really great moment for the sport to see one of the best drivers in the sport finally get that championship that they deserve one thing i've always liked about Stuart haas racing they're one of those teams that's always willing to take a shot on drivers of course you have danica patrick they took a huge shot on danica patrick maybe fetter to the wolves in my opinion i think she got to the cup series a little bit too quick but still they gave her a, a phenomenal opportunity and good equipment and that was a big risk on their part then a couple of years ago bringing ryan priest into the number 41 ryan priest being a driver that hardly has any sponsorship if you look at the general nascar community and the general nascar fan going into that hiring nobody really knew who ryan priest was i did obviously i follow 
all forms of motorsport. I'm a huge fan of Ryan Priest and his ability in the Wheeland series and on short tracks. But that was a huge risk from Stuart Haas Racing. Another one that they wanted to take and they weren't able to take the risk was Kyle Larson. The story has been talked about a bunch of times on how Tony Stewart really wanted to get Kyle Larson in one of his cars. And he was unable to do that for varying reasons, whether that's Ford, whether that's sponsorship. It was really difficult for Tony Stewart to pull that off. So he was unable to sign Kyle Larson. And he's regretted that ever since. And then you look at this year. They hired Noah Gregson, a driver I think a lot of people were counting out and circling this guy as like, yeah, I don't think he's ever going to have another great opportunity in a Cup Series car. We saw how well Gregson did in the Xfinity Series, and he really struggled getting to the Cup Series, made a huge mistake on social media, which got him taken out of the car for the rest of the season and overall lost his job. Lost his job, lost sponsorships, lost a bunch of fans, and then this year he's turned it around, won the fan vote, has gotten a lot of those old sponsorships back and is looking like a competitive driver once again. And that is because of Stuart Haas Racing giving him that opportunity. In an era of NASCAR where it's so difficult for drivers to get their rides on pure talent, Stuart Haas is one of those few organizations who put the talent above the money, which I love to see. And then the improvement we've seen out of Stuart Haas this season, the last couple of years, have been awful awful is an understatement for Stuart Haas Racing because they have such high expectations. They're expected to compete for the championship and make the playoffs every year. And the last two years have been awful. Kevin Harvick was able to get a pair of wins a couple of years ago, but then last year he went winless. The whole team went winless and they just looked completely awful. Weren't even very competitive last year. And then this season as a whole, the whole organization has stepped up, whether that's the engineers and the people back to the shop, the drivers working harder on the sim. They've really improved a lot this season, and it's been really great to see. And I think one of the big problems with Stuart Haas nowadays, and you've heard multiple people and personalities talk about it, it's the absence of the owners. Gene Haas is extremely busy. He's a very busy businessman, runs multiple motorsport teams, and then you have Tony Stewart, who has a couple of teams of his own as well. And now he's became an NHRA driver. He's gone full in when it comes to the NHRA. So he doesn't have as much time on his hands to be hands-on with his race team and help the team out as best he can, whether that's advice or actually getting his hands dirty. And the way the sponsorship model and the charter system works, it's not really benefiting Stuart Haas Racing, and from what it sounds like, it's not benefiting a lot of race teams right now. But it's very upsetting, very sad to see such a legendary organization. If you think about it, they really haven't been around that long. They've been around for 15 years. They started up in 2009, and they're, edi- they're ending in 2024. They haven't been around that long, but they've made such a huge impact as a race team in that short time. But with the team closing down, that means drivers and charters need to move on to new race teams. I'm going to put up this tweet from Bob Pockris, but it sounds like three out of these four charters could potentially already be accounted for. Sounds like 2311 is going to purchase a charter. Sounds like Trackhouse is going to purchase a charter. And that front row is going to purchase the third charter, which leaves one charter up for grabs. I think it's a huge question on who gets that third charter. I immediately thought of, oh, RFK. Brad's talked about how he wants to expand. Well, Brad K immediately went on Twitter and shut down any of those rumors potentially happening. I could see one of those three teams that purchased the other three charters purchasing a fourth charter, especially if we're talking about Trackhouse and Front Row Motorsports. Trackhouse has a bunch of sponsorship money. I don't think there's a team out there that's getting as many sponsors and sponsorship money as track house and you have to keep in mind for track house the driver situation they have they have suarez and chastain but they're also trying to add zane smith and shane van gisbergen to their cup series lineup and then you look at front row motorsports front row motorsports now becoming a tier one ford team they're going to get a lot more support a lot more quality support from ford And with the way they've been performing these last couple years as a race team with McDowell and Gilliland, it's been very impressive. 
And with Stuart Haas closing down, I know their Ford deal was ending at the end of the year anyway. I know for a fact Ford would want more teams out there because of this. Overall, I don't think 2311 would get that fourth charter so soon, but I wouldn't count it completely out. So what are a couple of other teams I can see purchasing this fourth charter? Well, another name that comes to mind is Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jr. Motorsports. Well, apparently Bob already asked Dale Jr. about this, and Jr. doesn't seem interested in purchasing a charter for next year, so I guess you can count out Dale Jr. and RFK Racing at this point for that fourth charter. I would give an outside shot to Spire just because how fast we've seen Spire Motorsports grow as a race team. I would give them an outside shot at purchasing that charter. Another team I would really consider has a great shot is Richard Childress Racing. I think my big issue with RCR adding another race team to their lineup would be that they've been struggling this year to begin with and that's with two cars. I think they really need to figure it out with two cars before they move on to three. But at the same time, Austin Hill is a huge talent and Richard Childress Racing would hate to lose him to another team because he's ready. I think out of all the Xfinity drivers, he could potentially be the most ready to go Cup Series racing right now. But at the same time, he seems very loyal to Richard Childress Racing and he's committed to potentially race for that race team in the future in the Cup Series but if a good enough offer comes up for him to race for a different team in the Cup Series, he could potentially jump ship. And the last one I'll throw in there is Legacy Motor Club. We did hear rumors. I love rumors. A couple of months ago that they could be talking to Stuart Haas and or colleague about purchasing one of their charters. And I think with all the owners that have came in, like Jimmy Johnson, I don't think Matt Kens is an owner, but he's a part of the team now. You got all these different people that are putting their hands into the Legacy Motor Club pile. And we all know how much Toyota want to become more and more and more involved in the Cup Series and have more teams out there competing. I think that would be the last team I would consider as a real possibility to get that last charter from Stuart Haas Racing. You also have to keep in mind that the other three are not yet confirmed. There's nothing that says that they had already purchased those charters. But it seems like, from what Bob said, that they're pretty much in agreement there just hasn't been a contract or money exchanged and i don't see any teams moving from the truck series or the xfinity series to the cup series next year the only one i could potentially see is junior motorsports and dale jr seems to always turn down these rumors i think it's a big question if they will ever go cup racing i would say probably not <laughs> like that's ever gonna happen oh, Right before I get to my final thoughts, I would like to mention I will be breaking down where I think these drivers are going to go, along with other drivers in my Silly Season video that I plan on making here in a couple of days. So keep an eye out for that. I would expect it late Friday night or early Saturday morning, most likely when you'll see it on my channel. Because we have some talented race car drivers, and there's already a lot of rumors about some of these drivers on where they're heading, especially Noah Gregson. There's talks about a lot of teams potentially going after him but my final thoughts on this sale it's it's sad it's sad it's depressing there's a lot of hard-working people i'm not talking about just the drivers and the crew chiefs i'm talking about all the people in the shop that have been working very hard all the engineers all the day-to-day -day people that are working in the shop today even after this announcement they went right back to work and are working in the shop to continue this season and finish off 2024 as strong as possible Stuart Haas, even though they're in the sport for 15 years, made a very huge impact on the sport. Also, I'm very interested to see how much these charters end up selling for. I do not think they're going to sell for as much as BJ McLeod sold his charter for last season because of the way the charter agreement is going. It's not those discussions aren't going that well, but we will have to see what happens with those charters. Like I mentioned earlier, it sounds like three of them are already being sold to three separate race teams. And that fourth one is up for grabs. I wish everybody luck at Stuart Haas Racing, whether they're an employee, a driver, a crew chief. I can see Rodney Childress retiring, by the way. I just wanted to feel like I could sneak that in. A lot of people are going to be looking for work. If they, if they weren't already, they're definitely looking now. And we're going to see a lot of new faces and new places in 2025. This is the first big domino to fall in silly season. And it's going to get really crazy, especially from... Hearing all the podcasts and stuff, everybody seems extremely convinced that this could be the most craziest 
silly season we've ever had, potentially. I'd like to remind you again, keep an eye out for that silly season video. Should be out Friday night, Saturday morning, where I'm going to be going through all the Cup Series, silly season, and what rumors I think are true, and what do I think is overall going to happen in 2025. How do I think the Cup Series field is going to look? Also, let me know in the comments of this video, where do you think these Stuart Haas drivers will go next year? But let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think about Stuart Haas Racing seizing all operations at the end of the season? Are you sad to see him go like I do? What is maybe your favorite memory of Stuart Haas Racing? Let me know. But that'll do it for me. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, aka Racing Boy Short, saying peace.